subscribe to our channel for latest video series on GAIN, UGC, NET and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. So we look at properties of the Laplace transform. Now see whatever function we are having, whatever Laplace transform you are having x is, it, can, it is going to be a rational function in s, right? Rational function in s means that we can represent it in some form of this kind, a naught s to the power n, a1 s n power uh, minus 1 and so on till a m upon, upon b naught s to the power n plus b1 s to the power n minus 1 till b n, right? So, I can write this conveniently as a0 upon b0 into s minus z1 in form of vectors, okay. I am just expressing the denominator and numerator in terms of factors. So, this is going to be something like this. This is generally going to be a rational function. Fine. So, the factors of the numerator, the factors these z1, z2, z3, roots of the numerator are known as zeros of the Laplace transform z1, z2, z3, till zm, all these. These are going to be known as zeros of, zeros of Laplace transform, right? And the roots, roots or the corresponding terms in the denominator, roots of denominator p1, p2, p3 till pn. They are known as poles of Laplace transform. Poles of Laplace transform. Now see clearly, for all the values of s, all the values of s equal to zeros of this Laplace, the value of the Laplace transform is going to be zero. For all values of z1, z2, z3, Laplace transform is going to have value as zero. And for all values of p1, p2, p3, that is at s is equal to poles of the system, the value of the Laplace transform is going to be infinity. Fine. Now see, there's one more concept here. As you can see that... Uh, See, number of factors of this numerator is going to be m, right? Power degree of this numerator is going to be m. Degree of the denominator is going to be n. So, what we are saying is, if n is greater than m, that is, number of poles is more than number of zeros. Number of poles is more than number of zeros. We say that xs is a, we say that x of s, this Laplace transform is a, proper rational function see this is a, this is a valid argument for all the rational functions if degree of the denominator is more than the degree of numerator we say that it is a proper rational function right and and if n if n is less than or equal to m right that is if number of poles is less than or equal to number of zeros less than or equal to number of zeros we say that this excess is a is a Improper rational function. Improper rational function. Fine. So we say that this is an improper rational function. Right. So uh, now what we are saying is. See one thing that we saw in the ROC is that we are defining ROC is the range of values of S. For which the Laplace transform is going to converge. Converge means it is going to have finite value. We need some range of values of S for which this Laplace transform does not have infinite value. right? And as you can see from the expression at S is equal to P1, P2, P3 and so on. That is at uh, when we are putting S is equal to poles of the system. We are going to obtain infinite values. Okay, you can just write it here. At, at x of 0. When you are going to put s is equal to 0 in this function, this is going to be 0. And at x of pole, that is whenever you are going to put s is equal to any pole of the system in this equation, you are going to obtain this value as infinite. So, whenever you are defining the ROC, Right, whenever we are defining region of convergence, we define range of values of S for which this Laplace transform is going to converge. We have to take care that it should not contain any pole of the system. Why? Because that you can see that at value of S is equal to pole of the system, what is happening? This Laplace transform is going to have infinite value which we do not want. We want the Laplace transform to converge to have a finite value. That is why... So you can just note this, 
this is going to be a node roc of x of s must not contain should not contain any pole of the system any pole of the system why because that at value of s is equal to the pole laplace transform is going to have value equal to infinity which we do not want if we want laplace transform to converge we do not want it to have value of infinity okay so what we can say just putting it in another language what can i say poles of x of s lie outside the roc outside the roc why why because uh, since x of s does not converge x of s does not converge at the poles it is not going to converge at the poles right however however zeros zero c zeros are not going to make any difference right so zeros may lie inside or outside the roc zeros may lie may lie inside or outside the roc because see wherever uh, this we putting s is equal to zero of the system right so we can uh, just uh, specify any laplace transform any function xs using its poles and zeros completely okay just using the location of the poles and zeros any laplace transform can be specified completely and its roc also can be specified okay so uh, we using this cross to represent a pole in s plane and we using this uh, circle to represent a zero in the s plane right we going to look at it by an example suppose you given a laplace transform x of s which is 2s plus 4 upon s square plus 4s plus 3 now if you just factorize the denominator and numerator what you are going to obtain this is going to be 2 into s plus 2 upon factors of the denominator are going to be 1 and 3 so i can write it as s plus 1 into s plus 3 now see root of the numerator what we we call it as zeros so zero for this function is going to be minus 2 at 1 0 at minus 2 and poles of the system are going to be at minus 1 and minus 3 now see since number of poles is more than number of zeros this is going to be a proper rational function and it has two poles and one zero now if i try to represent them in a s plane this is going to be my j omega axis this is sigma axis now i have a pole at minus 1 Zero at minus two, and again one pole at minus three. Right now, I need to define a ROC such that it does not contain any pole. Right. So see, there the three uh, ROC is possible. Right. Three ROC are possible for this case. One ROC is going to be s should be less than minus three. If s is less than minus three, that is left to minus three, it is not going to contain any pole. Then one ROC possible is right to minus one. Right to s is equal to minus one. In that case also, it is not going to contain any pole. And one ROC possible is between minus one and minus three. Okay, so we're going to look which function is going to have which ROC. For example, this function is going to have ROC greater than s is equal to minus one. Why? See, uh, there are some rules that define all these things. Okay, so we're going to look next at properties of the ROC. Next topic that we're going to look at is properties of the ROC. So we know that ROC of a uh, ROC of a Laplace transform, ROC of x of s depends on the nature of the signal x t, right? So uh, these properties are going to be defined based on signal. What uh, what kind of signal is going to have what kind of ROC? So first property we already looked at it. ROC does not contain any poles. ROC is not going to contain any poles. Any poles. Next property that we are going to look is, if x t is a finite duration signal, if x t is a finite duration signal, finite duration signal means occurs between two definite points in time, right? What does a finite duration signal means? If x t is zero for zero for t except except when t lies between t one and t two. that is it is having values only for definite interval okay finite interval right then then 
ROC is the entire S plane. Entire S plane. Possibly except except S is equal to zero and S is equal to infinity. Okay, so we are not including these two points. Except these two points, we are including. We are saying that if X T is a finite duration signal, then then this is then then the R O C is the entire S plane. Okay, we are going to explain why we are not including these two points later. Right now, you look at the next property. If X T is a right-handed signal, so uh, see what do we mean by a right-sided signal? We are saying that it occurs only for values of time greater than some instance. Okay, if X T is a right-sided signal, right-sided signal, which means what is a right-sided signal? That X T must be zero for T. Less than t one, which is less than infinity, right? That is for one time instance t one. Any point of time less than this t one, this function is going to have the value zero. That is, it occurs only for values of t right to t one, right? Then, then R O C is R O C is of the form R O C is of the form. Real part of S is going to be greater than sigma max. Okay, uh, that is what I was talking about, right? I told you in the previous example that one single function can have multiple R O Cs, right? In this example, we saw that this this signal, this uh, function could have multiple R O Cs to the left of minus three, to the right of minus one, between minus three and minus one. So how do you decide, right? Do you decide this according to these properties of the R O C? Okay, if your signal is a right-handed signal, right side. Did signal, then you say that the R O C is going to be of this form. Real part of S that is sigma is going to be greater than sigma max. Now, what is the sigma max? Sigma max equals the maximum real part, maximum real part of any of the poles of any of the poles of X S poles of. X of S. Okay, so what do we say is that R O C is a half plane, is a half plane to the right of the vertical line, real part of S equal to sigma max in the S plane, and thus to the right of all the poles of X S. That is, if I am, uh, if I am transforming, if I am finding Laplace transform of a right-sided signal, then my R O C is going to be right to the rightmost pole. Okay, if you just consider the example, suppose if this signal, if this given signal was a right-sided signal, then we would say that my R O C is going to be to the right of minus one. Minus one is my rightmost pole, right? So my R O C is going to be to the right of minus one, to this line, right of this line. Okay, if this is a left-sided signal, suppose, then my R O C would have been. To the left of leftmost pole or minus three. Okay, that is what my next property is. If okay, just just the converse of the third property. If X T is a left-sided signal, see, don't confuse causal and or anti-causal signals with right-sided and left-sided signals. See, obviously, a causal signal is going to be a right-sided signal since it occurs only for values of t greater than zero. But all the right-sided signals are not going to be causal. Okay, uh, for example, okay, just look at it here only. Suppose I am having a signal which occurs for all the values of t greater than minus two. Okay, that is some signal like this. Suppose now this is not a causal signal. Okay, this is not a causal signal. Why? Because it is not occurring for values of t greater than zero only. Okay, it has some values for t less than zero also. So this is not going to be a causal signal, non-causal. But this is a right-sided signal. Still, this is a right-sided signal. Why? Because this occurs only for only for values of time right to t is equal to minus two. Okay, so there's a difference between causality and right-sided, left-sided signals, right? Similarly, for anti-causal and left-sided signals, right? So what are we saying is, if X T is a left-sided signal, left-sided signal that is, if X T is zero, if X T is zero for Any t greater than t two greater than minus infinity. That is, it occurs only for values of t to the left of t two. Then what do we say? Then R O C is of the form. R O C is going to be of the form. Real part of S. Real part of S is less than sigma minimum. That is, R O C is going to lie left to leftmost pole, where where sigma minimum is the 
मिनिमम रियल पार्ट मिनिमम रियल पार्ट ऑफ एनी ऑफ द पोल्स ऑफ एक्सेस एनी ऑफ द पोल्स ऑफ एक्सेस सो वॉट कैन वी से वॉट कैन बी कंक्लूड इज आर ओसी इज अ हाफ प्लेन टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ द वर्टिकल लाइन रियल पार्ट ऑफ एस इक्वल टू सिग्मा मिनिमम दैट इज आर ओसी इज गोइंग टू लाई टू द लेफ्ट ऑफ द लेफ्ट मोस्ट पोल ओके राइट नाउ वन मोर प्रॉपर्टी दैट यू कैन सी इज इफ एक्स टी इज अ टू साइडेड सिग्नल टू साइडेड सिग्नल ना वॉट इज अ टू साइडेड सिग्नल टू साइडेड सिग्नल मीन्स एक्सटी इज एन इनफाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन सिग्नल ओके दैट इज नीदर राइट हैंडेड नॉर लेफ्ट हैंडेड राइट देन आर ओ सी इज गोइंग टू बी ऑफ द फॉर्म सी वॉट डू वॉट डिड वी लर्न अबाउट अ फाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन सिग्नल इफ अ सिग्नल इज हैविंग फन फाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन इफ इट इज डिफाइन फॉर फाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन इट्स आर ओ सी इज गोइंग टू बी द एंटायर एक्सप्लेन नाउ वाइस वर्सा इफ एक्सी इज अ टू साइडेड सिग्नल और इनफाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन सिग्नल What do we mean by two-sided signal? It's an infinite duration signal. Then, then R O C is going to be finite. Okay, R O C is of the form R O C is going to lie between two poles. Okay, sigma one and sigma two. This is what I was talking about. Okay, now you can see for all the examples. If my R O C lies to the left of minus three, that means that my signal was a left-sided signal. If R O C lies to the right of minus one, that means my signal was a right-sided signal. And if R O C lies between minus three and minus one, that means that my signal was a infinite duration signal. It was a two-sided signal. Okay, and if my signal was a finite duration signal, then R O C would have been entire S plane. Okay, so uh, using these properties of the ROC, you can just see what what is going to be the ROC of a signal. Uh, just completing this definition here, sigma one and sigma two are the are the real parts of two poles of X of S. So what can I say? R O C is going to be a vertical strip in the S plane between the vertical lines sigma one and sigma two, right? So uh, this is uh, how we are defining some properties of R O C based on the nature of the signal. So let us look at some questions now. Okay, so now they have given you a signal x t is equal to e power minus a t, which occurs only for values of t between zero and capital T, and they are asking you to calculate the Laplace transform of x of t. so we'll go with the basic definition x of s laplace transform of a signal xt is defined as integration from minus infinity to infinity xt e to the power minus st into dt right now if you just see at the signal definition of the signal it is occurring only for values of t between 0 and capital t so i can modify the limit from 0 and capital t and i can put xt equal to e to the power minus at into e to the power minus st dt so this can be written as e to the power minus a plus s into t dt if you just perform this integration you are going to obtain e to the power minus a plus s t upon okay <coughs> just taking this minus common so this is going to be s plus a for limit 0 and capital t now if you just put these limits what are you going to obtain i can just take this one by S plus a outside uh, minus also I'm taking outside, so I'm going to obtain e to the power minus a plus s into capital T minus power one uh, pa power this putting this t is equal to zero we are going to obtain one, so it's going to be one. Just uh, resetting it, I'm going to obtain the answer as one minus e to the power minus a plus s into capital T upon s plus a. Now see, if you talk about the R O C, we've just seen that if if any signal is a finite duration signal, this is a finite duration signal, right? Then the R O C is going to be the entire S plane. So the R O C is going to be entire S plane. <coughs> okay. One thing that would confuse you is that if you put S is equal to minus a, if we just uh, put S is equal to minus a, the R O C is not going to converge. Not going to converge means it is going to have infinite value. You can just uh, maybe maybe you would think this, but if you just look at the denominator of this x, but see that is not going to happen. Why? Because if you just put x of uh, okay, where do we do this? Just put x of minus a in this integral. In this integral here, what are you going to get? You're going to get zero to t 
e to the power minus if you just put s is equal to minus a what you are going to get minus a plus a into t dt so this is going to become zero this is going to become power zero and in that case you are going to have x is equal to capital t okay so uh, what what we are trying to say is that even at s is equal to minus a this uh, this laplace transform is going to converge okay it is going to converge for entire s plane for all values of s all possible values of s okay at no point in uh, the s plane this is going to have infinite value even at s is equal to minus a this is going to converge